Hi, I'm JJ Lamb, and I'm the president of the Vail Preservation Society. Vail has a very rich and layered history, but sadly, most of that history has been erased by time and development. Very little of it exists today. For the last 20 years, I've been collecting, preserving, and interpreting the stories of Vail's past so that we can better understand the foundations of our community as we prepare for the future. So throughout this series, I'm going to take you on tours of special places, some of them hidden in plain sight, uh, but places that hold the stories of our vanished Vale. And for our very first episode, I can't think of a better place to start than this humble building right behind me. This is the place where all of Vale's stories connect. Every early family that was part of Vale has a story that connects somehow to this building. Now, no one's been able to go into this building for many years, but today we're going to go on a special tour inside the Old Vale store and post office. And I can't wait to share with you the fascinating story of the man who built it. Come on. It's hard to imagine now that this building was the hub of Vale. It's where everybody's paths crossed. It's where people hatched big dreams. It's where they um, connected with each other. It's where they shared the latest gossip. Um, we're inside the 1908 Old Vale store and post office. Now this wasn't Vale's first store actually. The first store was built in 1888 as part of a railroad easement agreement. And that wooden uh, board and batten style building uh, stood here from 1888 until 1908. When in the middle of the night there was a huge fire and that wooden store burned to the ground. Otto Schley um, ran the Vale store, actually it wasn't called the Vale store then, it was called Schley store. And it was operated by Otto Schley. Otto Schley immigrated from Germany to the United States in 1884. We don't know exactly why he immigrated, but it most likely had something to do with the instability of Germany during that time and especially during the 1870s. There was some economic unrest and just a lot of upheaval. And in the 1870s, 600,000 people migrated from Germany and went to South America and North America. In the 1880s, that number more than doubled. Over a million people left Germany. And Otto Schley was one of those people. He came um, to the United States. Uh, he was in New York. And by 1888, we see that he had become a naturalized citizen. And by uh, 1890, he was here in Arizona. And by 1891, he was here in Vail. Now what brought him out here, really, I think, were the opportunities, partner in mines. He had many mining interests. Uh, he had many part local partners. And he also was a merchant. He was not only mining claims, he would go to all the different camps. The Santa Ritas and the empires were full of these little camps with miners needing supplies. He would uh, set up little like mini stores selling uh, merchandise uh, to those miners. Eventually then he saw this store here in 1905 as an opportunity to expand his business interests and to really be part of building up Vail. He had big dreams for Vail too. That wooden store, like I said, burned in 1908. But you know, when I look at these adobe walls, and it's a very humble building, but it's built out of materials that were locally available right here. Uh, the dirt, the wooden shipping crates that are the ceiling and that were the original floor, um, they're recycled, repurposed. People did not waste anything, and neither did Otto. And so when the store burned in May 
the very next day he's quoted in the newspaper as saying, I will rebuild and this time it will be a brick. And it was, adobe brick. And he was open for business by August of that very year. Now there were two things saved from that horrible fire in the middle of the night. And, and those were the ledger book and the um, beautiful 1907 National Cash Register. They were a pretty newfangled thing in those days. And Otto had spared no expense. Uh, it had a marble base. It had a, a custom nameplate, Schley and Company, because the store was called Schley's Store. It, it weighed over 200 pounds. And I'm using the past tense, but luckily, you know, it was one of the two things saved from the fire. And uh, his mail clerk, just moments after he'd managed to get them out of the burning building, it's reported that he could hardly lift a thing. No one's sure how he was able to get uh, the cash register out. But luckily, uh, Vail Preservation Society has that cash register. It was donated, and when this building is restored, it will have a home here and I can't wait for everyone to see it. This store sits, oh, maybe 100, 150 feet off of the rail line and about 20 feet from what was originally the old wagon road and then later the Vale Road that went to Tucson. So it was ideally located for a merchant and to do business. So I think Otto had a very keen business sense, as did uh, the folks who built the original store in 1888. And thinking about Otto and his big dreams, by being the merchant here and having the postal services, that brought people together from a huge area. And I'm gonna compare it to the area of the Vail School District. So people as far away as almost the Pantano and the Empire Mountains, the Santa Rita's, up in the Rincon Valley, over towards Esmond Station, which right now would be about at the corner of Houghton Road and Marianne Cleveland Way. All of those people, that huge area, they came together here in this very building. Oftentimes, this is where people came to vote. This is where they came to get their mail. This is where they came to meet up. Now, the other thing I have to tell you is that in the very early days, this building, what well, was definitely a civic center, it was multi-purpose. And it wasn't just a mercantile. It wasn't just the post office. It was also a bar. And at one point, Otto had the only liquor license between Benson and Tucson. So you can imagine how many people came here to meet up, to um, test out a new idea on their friends and see what they thought about it, uh, to hatch new ideas, um, to just really make big plans together. And that bar ran almost the length of this, the main room. The building, the post office that we're in, it has four rooms. Uh, this is the main room that we're in right now. And the east end of the building is actually of a different construction. It's not adobe, it's stone rubble. And it was built as living, to be used as living quarters. Otto was the postmaster, but he almost always had a clerk that he paid to do those day-to-day -day postal services. They lived in that east end of the building, and Otto and Evie Schley and their children had a little home built, oh, maybe an eighth of a mile away, not very far. Where it was located is on the Old Vale Middle School campus. They had that home built at the same time they had this building built in 1908 and they called, they painted their house white, and they called it Casablanca. And really, many, many people, especially in early Arizona, they like to call their homes Casablanca. So you'll run across that a lot. Otto was really busy in local politics, and he had, I think he had a big goal of getting appointed to the territorial legislature. That didn't happen for him, but actually that's that's where he, he was at a Democratic Party meeting where they were deciding who to appoint to the Arizona Territorial Legislature the night that the post office burned. He did receive a call. It was very late at night, and 
there was a, a depot that was just maybe 100 feet away from this post office right here. And uh, they got a hold of Otto in Tucson. He hopped into his wagon and he made it out here in two, a little under two hours. That's pretty incredible, um, given the time and that it, you know, it was the, the horses were pulling the wagon and all of that. Um, meanwhile, the folks here in Vail at the station, they did try to save that burning building. And there was a water tank and they had one of those canvas hoses, but the hose was only 50 feet long. And so they all had to just um, watch the building burn. By the time Otto got here, it was totally gone. I see Otto as a really optimistic person, a big dreamer, and some would say with dreams too big to ever uh, be grounded in reality. When you think about what it was like to immigrate from Germany, Germany had fairly recently become a unified country, but it's still, if you were born at a certain social place in society, it was very stratified you were probably gonna remain in that place. And my sense is that Otto was never content to be pigeonholed, and so the opportunity to come to America in those days where all your dreams, you know, anything was possible, I think that would have really appealed to Otto. You know, when he came to Vail, then um, this area, I think, benefited from those big dreams. Otto always had some big plan, some goal, he was a partner in several mining companies. Otto was on Vail School Board, and the Vail School District started in 1903, so he jumped right into civic affairs. Otto leased the space uh, where the Old Vail Store Post Office is and land to, uh, just to the north where Old Vail Middle School is now from the Pima County Board of Supervisors. And off and on over the years, there was always a little controversy when the time for the lease would come to be renewed. And a couple of times, there were folks from the Helvetia Mining Company who would swoop in and try to get the lease from Otto. That always caused a lot of controversy. And there were a couple of times that Otto took them to court over it. But in 1911, Otto made a big leap forward. He decided to lease all of this land and much of the what's now the school district land where Old Vail Middle School is. And the local newspapers at the time said, Otto Schley buys the town of Vail. Now he, it was really a lease. So Otto leased the property from the Pima County Board of Supervisors for the exorbitant sum of $400. And at that point in time, everyone began calling Otto the mayor of Vail. Now, the mayor of Vail, uh, he had lots of big dreams beyond owning the town. Um, he worked very hard to get the first um, municipal golf course out here in Vail because Otto felt like blending the, the city and the Pima County governments into one organization was the way to go. That was re really, really forward thinking and it was going to be so much more efficient. Um, for government, uh, financially. And Otto was one of the people that ascribed to that school of thought. He thought that would be much more efficient. It would help Pima County and Vail and Tucson to grow more efficiently. It was gonna be better for business. And that could be why Otto actually didn't move to incorporate Vail. He was fairly young. I, I'm sure he thought he would live a lot longer than he did. In December of 1914, he told his wife, Evie, um, he was going out to check on some of his mining claims. Pretty typical thing. You know, people would go out and check on their mining claims. In those days, you know, you wanted to work it. You didn't want someone else to come along and steal your claim. And you would leave your paperwork in one of those Prince Albert tin cans. Because think about what was waterproof in those days. Those great tin cans with a uh, lid that moved up and down. Anyway, he went up towards into the Rincon Valley to check out one of his claims. This is December 14th, and he just didn't come back. And December passed, January passed, and um, we're into February and March. And finally, 
um, a, a man and his son were walking up in the Rincon Valley near one of the creeks, and they came across a body. Uh, it was a man's body, and uh, there was a ring on the finger and a watch. And so they took that watch and they went into Tucson with it and reported that they'd found a body to the sheriff. Um, the sheriff had the watch, they went back and recovered uh, the ring. And it had initials uh, engraved in the inside and a wedding date, 1905. And um, they thought it could possibly be Otto Schley. They brought the watch and the shirt and the ring here to Evie, Otto's wife, and she said yes, that they were Otto's. Otto passed away too soon, really. I think he would have probably, he, as I look back at all of the people who settled here, he was really the one who had those kinds of big civic dreams for Vail. And those kind of really got put on hold at that point until maybe almost 100 years later when people started to have dreams of making something more than a census designated place of Vail. Otto Schley was all about the future, all about the next big plan, uh, the next dream, and how he was going to make things happen. So what would Otto think about so many people working for so long to rehabilitate the 1908 Vail store and post office? Would he think that's a waste of time? I don't think so, because this project is not about the past. This is about Vail's future. When this building is rehabilitated successfully, by Lloyd Construction and Vail Preservation Society. It's going to take its place along Vail's Main Street as the Lloyd Construction Vail Welcome and Heritage Center. This is going to um, really revitalize downtown Vail between the tracks. This is again going to be that civic and cultural hub of Vail, that place where neighbors meet, where, where people catch up with each other, share the latest news, uh, maybe share their next big idea. This is all about the future, and we think that Otto Schley would really like that. Well, thank you very much for joining me on this tour of the Old Vale Post Office. I hope you'll join me again next time where we're going to meet right back here at the Old Post Office and I'm going to introduce you to Vale's most beloved postmistress. Till next time. <laughs>